the helicopter was just ready to come out and start filming. I just wanted to get one more in so I could, you know, just be ready. enough. Sucks. But right when I took off, I knew something was kind of wrong. Right as about 7.20, I knew it was going to be rough. When I was in the air, I didn't really hear anything. Really dead silence, and then I hit the wall and heard a really loud explosion, you know, just right in my boots. Felt like someone packed dynamite in there, you know what I mean? Lit them and my feet blew up. It was crazy. On both sides, he had fractures to the talus, which is sort of the central bone in the ankle, and the calcaneus, which is your heel bone. Calcaneus fracture can be a career-ending injury. That was the concern right off the gate, like, is this it for him? Is he done? The left foot was just like a normal break. On his right foot, they actually had to stick a, a titanium plate to look like a little piece of Swiss cheese, and they put a bunch of pins and screws and put it back together. When he was told he wouldn't ski again, he was uh, I mean, super stressed. That's the one thing he, he does, it's the one thing he loves to do, and it's what he's always thinking about doing, is skiing. One problem that you have when you can't bear weight on either foot is you are luggage. You can't move. You're done. And that's when you learn who your friends are. I pretty much did everything just to help him out that I could, you know, because he obviously was in a wheelchair, couldn't put any pressure on his feet. He was crawling around on his hands and knees. He had morphine drip. I didn't even think twice about it, just it's my brother, he's my family, and that's what you're supposed to do. I guess my job was to carry him around like a sack of potatoes and help him to uh, just get to the bathroom or to the shower or, or to his bed or you know wherever it was he wanted to go. It was definitely humbling, you know, you're skiing every day and having a lot of fun and all of a sudden it's taken away. I think he's had to face a lot of things for himself, he's relied on skiing a lot throughout his whole life and throughout his whole career to sort of like define who he is. And so when you take that away, you, know, you have to look into yourself a bit more. And so I think it brought a lot of positive qualities out in him more as a person. He had time to really reflect on himself more so than on skiing. It was just a good time for me to think about stuff and get my head back, you know, and fall in love with the sport that I'm doing again. And just took my rehab pretty seriously kind of gave me something to look forward to. Like right out of the wheelchair, I thought I would I might have been able to stand up and just start walking, but it was not the case, you know. Went from a wheelchair to a walker, to crutches, to a cane, to nothing, you know. Uh, you know, we had to progress Tanner um, through, his, through his gait training, teaching him how to walk again. You know, an injury of this magnitude, you can't just throw the crutches away one day and hop up and, and walk down the street. It was a big reality check. Well, when they cleared me to ski, my feet just didn't feel like they were ready. I had nothing but time and just kept it in the gym. And the longer I gave myself, the better it was. You know, November came, chilled out a little bit in November, just let them heal a couple more weeks. Let's go, yeah. First couple days of skiing, I was back. I was sliding a bunch of boxes and down flat rails feels good to be back hitting jumps and skiing pipe and skiing powder and hitting rails and doing all that stuff. I'm trying to push it as hard as I can and I think the decision to wait was a great thing because I feel really good right now. I'm still here, you know what I mean, after that injury, I'm not going to let it take me down. <laughs>